Hello, hello everyone. Welcome, I'm Dr. Kara Wada, board certified in allergy, immunology, lifestyle medicine. And today I'm sharing something incredibly personal, my journey as a participant in a clinical trial for Sjogren's disease, formerly known as Sjogren's syndrome. As many of you know, I'm not just a physician. I also live with Sjogren's, a systemic autoimmune disease. And in the beginning, it was incredibly overwhelming one to you know grapple with the diagnosis and realize kind of what symptoms were connected to that but the fatigue the constant dry mouth and dry eyes the body pain especially low back stiffness that really takes root when i'm sitting too long or when i'm playing with my kids on the floor but beyond those physical challenges it's the emotional toll it's that feeling that your body has betrayed you which in a way it kind of has, and that nagging fear of the unknown, wondering if or when things are going to get worse. And I think that has continued to be the hardest part. And what I continually work on through kind of all the tools I've added to my toolbox over this last five and a half years, all of that in mind, that's what ultimately led me to investigate joining a clinical trial. It, it was in part looking for relief from some ongoing symptoms, it was part wanting to be part of something bigger and to give back to the community in another way and contribute to the future of Sjogren's treatment and offer hope to those who are going through the same path. So the OASIS trial is the name of the trial that I'm participating in. It is studying a medication called Dazodalapep. It is a CD40 ligand blocker. Bit of a mouthful, I know, but the simple version, it interrupts communication between certain white blood cells called T cells and B cells. And those are playing a critical role in how the immune system is malfunctioning within Sjogren's specifically. And it's helping turn down that overactive immune system response. Before starting, my biggest question was, one, is this medication safe? Second, I wondered, you know, is it going to work? Is this worth my time and energy? Because the trial location is a little over an hour drive away. And of course, like starting anything new, I was nervous. I had never had to get infusions on a regular basis, but I also was hopeful. And part of me was a bit worried. Could I get the sugar water, the placebo, the inactive version of the treatment? Because each of these trials is set up where a percentage of the patients gets saline in their infusion. So this is a phase three clinical trial, meaning it's a larger scale study to test both the effectiveness and the safety of the medication. It's considered double blind and placebo controlled, meaning that I don't know what I'm getting. The people out in Dayton and our study say they don't know what I'm getting. And one out of every three participants in this study is getting the placebo or the inactive form, the saline. That means that we are trying to decrease the, the likelihood that the results could be skewed by our own perceptions of what is going on. Getting into the trial was a multi-step process. It involved emailing the study coordinator, a phone call to review the basic eligibility criteria, and then I had an initial study visit, which was a very thorough day. It was a long day. Thorough history, a physical exam, lab work, chest x-ray, EKG, tubes and tubes of blood work. And then there was a waiting game to see if I qualified. And actually, there are two versions of the OASIS study, and the initial one that I was trying to qualify for, I did not qualify for. But I was fortunate enough to qualify for the second arm of the study. And so they called me a couple weeks later, and I was able to enroll. So now I'm about six months in. This is a study that's going to take place over the course of an entire year and then a little more. So I'm six months in and, you know, what's the verdict? <laughs> well, the good news is my energy levels in general are so much better. I certainly have those ups and downs depending on how my anxiety and my depression is, how my sleep spin, if my kids have brought home a cold, you know, those things certainly take a little bit of a hit. But on the whole more energy, pretty amazing. I also have even left the house a few times without my trusty water bottle and not had a panic attack. I count this as a huge win. I'm waking up in the middle of the night with some spit in my mouth. Occasionally I'm having to like, oh gosh, I got too much in there. Not too much, but more than I'm used to. 
and I haven't felt really the need to use eye drops in quite some time. Though admittedly, I'm not always the best about using them, even when I need them. Now, the little bit less exciting, you know, thing to think about the side effects. I will say, you know, it is an infusion. It's 90 minutes long. You have to wait for a little while after that to make sure you don't have a reaction. So it is a significant time investment and it just takes time to get that treatment. I go about every four weeks on average. On infusion days, I have felt a little bit, you know, tired afterwards. I don't know how much of that is the infusion and or just the whole process of driving out there, coming back, all those things. I've had a little bit of palpitations. That seems to get better. So I usually just plan for that day to kind of be a bit of a wash. I don't put much on my schedule. And if I have the energy to get some work done or do some things, awesome. And if I don't, I don't sweat it. Being in a double blind trial is a unique experience in that, you know, it's not knowing what the future holds. Did I get the real thing or not? I'm pretty sure I got the real thing, but I won't know until the end of this one year. The really cool thing though is for many of these phase three trials, at the end of that year, even if you got the placebo, then typically there's something called an open label extension. So everyone gets access to the medication while it's in kind of that limbo phase before it might be approved by the FDA. And this is the last step prior to FDA evaluation and hopefully approval for you know, the first FDA approved treatments for Sjogren's disease. So why do clinical trials matter? They are the stepping stones to figuring out what treatments are effective, making sure they are safe. They involve careful testing and evaluation, typically in three phases, usually starting off quite small, and then the size of those trials increasing over time as they prove that that drug does appear to be safe and does appear to be effective. There's also steps along the way to figure out what's the ideal dosing. So in this particular trial, there's actually three arms, placebo, and then there are two different doses that folks can receive. If you are thinking about joining a clinical trial, it's really important to do your homework. Go to clinicaltrials.gov, excellent resource. You can search through ongoing trials, eligibility criteria. You can find the contact information for the study sites. You are in control. When you enter into a clinical trial, you can leave at any point along the way. You know, it's really important to think about compassionate, informed choices. I recently had a patient share her frustration about feeling dismissed by the healthcare system. And she, like so many of us with Sjogren's, have been told, oh, your symptoms in your head, it's just fibromyalgia, you're just tired, go do yoga, use your essential oils, whatever, just aging. Together, we talked about her symptoms, we explored those possible root causes, and we started developing a personalized plan. I also was able to share with her about clinical trials, and being a part of this trial has given me an even deeper experience of being on that patient side of things, waiting for answers, waiting for the lab results, navigating kind of this little bit of a convoluted system. This experience has really strengthened my commitment to providing patient-centered care, really coming together as a team to truly listen, to validate your lived experience, and to empower my patients to make informed choices about their health. It's been my first time receiving regular infusions and understanding what that feels like. I've gotten some great tips from my fellow um, uh, chronic illness community about how to stay comfortable in the infusion sleep bringing cozy blankets and fun podcasts or, you know, my headphones so I can watch some Netflix. But it also gives me some ideas of what I might want if, you know, when I open a center that offers treatments like this. So I am incredibly hopeful about the future of Sjogren's treatment. While this journey isn't easy, you are not alone. I'm here to support you. And there is a wonderful growing community of people walking this path alongside of us. Be sure to connect with the Success with Sjogren's Sisterhood group on Facebook. It's free support group, resources, connection that I help run. Download my free Sjogren's Superhero Starter Kit. It is packed full of valuable tools and tips, great resources that are out there. And I'll put all those links in the description. In the meantime, what questions do you have about clinical trials or Sjogren's disease treatments? What's giving you hope? Share your experiences in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe to my Sjogren's Friendly Tips and videos so you don't miss the next one.